My name's John Boucher, I'm a photographer and artist. I'm based in the Vault Artist Studio in East Belfast, been a member there for a couple of years. Uh, I am a long-standing member of the photographic community. I've been working uh, here in Belfast for nearly 25 years. Uh, worked across the community sector. Um, all manner of uh, uh, jobs, working with um, disadvantaged communities, working with uh, travellers, tour people, uh, tour blind people, uh, a couple of blind folk to take photos as part of a group. Um, so I've got a wealth of uh, experience and on the basis of that apparently I'm here to tell you something about, talk to you about uh, World Photography Day. So the first photo I'm going to start with here really is uh, quite a well-known photograph there. It's quite a literal uh, image, uh, the world's highest standard of living. It's by a, a woman called um, Margaret Burke White. Uh, she's quite famous, it's taken in 1937. Uh, there's a couple of things uh, about this that made me uh, show it to you. Um, there's a very obvious uh, line there between obviously what, what's on the board there and you, there's no way like the American way and it's particularly white. There's the, the nuclear family, family you're looking at there, the, the gentleman's family with the boy, the daughter and the, the wife and the, the little terry and they're driving around and then in front of them you've got this queue of black folk. Now it turns out this is from um, the it was the floods in um, Ohio, the river uh, bank broke and floods. So this is actually part of the um, relief effort. So if you look at the photos, it's not that depression era though you think of it, they're actually quite well dressed though. It's a very recent from the floods so they're there to um, get uh, relief from the, the government. And the next photograph that follows on from that because it's taken more or less the same time, very famous photograph called The Migrant Mother. Uh, this was taken by um, Dorothea Lang. Uh, it's a woman called um, Florence Owens Thompson. So she's age 32. Uh, she's a migrant um, uh, P worker, though there's dispute over that whether she was just a, a, a migrant from the Dust Bowl, the whole era of the Dust Bowl where this is taken. Now, um, Dorothea Lang, <clears throat> she was part of a thing called the Farm Security Agency, uh, uh, sorry, Farm Security Administration, and that was set up as part of the New Deal by um, Roosevelt, um, getting the Dust Bowl going, getting the rural areas going, the, the farming, Farm Security Administration. So part of that, they had 11 photographers that were going out to actually sell and promote that idea and what they were doing and make a recording of, of the times. Um, and between, there was 11 photographers, there's Walker Evans is another one, Gordon Parks and Dorothy Lang would be the three main uh, ones that would be the most well known. But that can of work was created in a, a seven years, something like that, that. Between the 11 photographers, they're now uh, dealt with as a, or seen as a body of work, a body of artwork itself. So they're actually in the, the photographs are in the Library of Congress. So you can see them and gain them there. I mean, I, I love this photograph. It's only, there's actually three children of the seven that um, she was mother to. Uh, you've got the little baby there in her arms as well. So this farm security uh, administration, I think it's something that we should perhaps be looking at as well. It's like government funded, let the photographers artists go out and document it. I know it happens to a certain extent. There are things like that happening. Um, but I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of anything sustained in that. <clears throat> so yeah, we need the work. Um, now this is another photograph. This is photographed by a fellow called Bill Brand, um, uh, the coal miner. Again, a very famous photograph and taken uh, 937 again. Um, Bill Brand's one of my favorite photographers, I think. Uh, very, very interesting. He had uh, links with the Surrealists. Um, he was friends with uh, Magritte and we'll see a, a, a portrait that he took further on. I'm going to link on to the uh, Surrealists, but they're worth noting that um, Margaret Burke White, um, who was in the uh, that first photograph that I showed you, she with uh, Lee Miller uh, was in the um, some of the concentration camps where they found after the Second World War. Um, uh, and Lee Miller was the muse to Man Ray and uh, would have been friendly with uh, Bill Brandt here. 
um, worth checking out Bill Brandt's uh, or do a search on a generic uh, search engine for Bill Brandt, Bill Brandt's eyes, Bill Brandt, Bill Brandt um, hands, and you'll see that for the, the work that he was producing in the early 30s, it was ahead of its time. It's very, very good work. Uh, great, great photographer. Um, and now we're on to who this fellow, I love this fellow, Mick Ouija. Um, he's called Arthur Figlig. He's from, again, from the, uh, the early era of the photogra uh, photography. So, well, early ish, I suppose. He was 1920s, 30s, 40s. He died in 67, I think. But he, he was actually very well known for his um, crime scene photo photographs of New York. You know, obviously during the, the gangster uh, era, but also, you know, he was out and about documenting it. What I love about him is that, that he actually, he would listen to the his, um, the police radio. So he'd be listening to here and, and there'd be a fire over there and there'd be, you know, I don't know, a domestic somewhere else and then it'd be a murder. And he would basically go, he would judge which was the most photographic and drive to it. And the photo you see here, he's using this old speed graphics. They were big plate cameras, big negatives, but you know, they're, they're something like this, really quite big negatives. So he would go to the scene, get the photos, often arriving before the police uh, and any other press men, but he had a dark room set up in the boot of his car. So these big American sedans in the, in the 20s and 30s. So he would drive down to a darkened alleyway, uh, develop the film, print, make prints as well and often the newspapers photographers would be coming in to to get the, the prints developed and he's walking out with a check already because he's got the prints onto the desk of the editor and he's really well known for it i just love the hot spur just the out and about and going for it um so there's a couple of photos here that he did um this again this I, this is quite literal but it's i love that idea of just coming across this so it's high grade all beef, all, all beef be, uh, frankfurters. There's a fire there simply at boiling water. I mean, it's a very simple image, but it amused me. And I actually got uh, a copy of this. This is a photograph of, of the photo. I got a couple of prints there. I gave myself for Christmas and two of these Ouija prints of this one. And then this one uh, again, which is just a couple of guys in the back of the paddy wagon. Uh, and I can imagine them giving each other the eye as your man's taking the photo. Maybe he's taking one, maybe two photos. Probably just the one. Uh, you can you can just imagine the the swearing that's going on and the eye rolling that's going on behind the the hats there. I love the composition it leads you into. It's very 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 good photograph. And you look at the uh, the stretch of this on the. Yeah, I mean you would just wouldn't see that in a, in a spare wheel. You know you don't see that nowadays. This is, so it really dates it. Obviously how sharply the dress as well. So this uh, next photograph is, if you know Tom Waits and Right Rain Dogs, this is the cover shot from it. And it's by a photographer, a Danish photographer called Lars Peterson. Um, and I'm just gonna check the notes that I got that right because I'm always getting his name. Yeah, Lars Peterson. <clears throat> he produced a, a body of work called um, Cafe Lemmets. Um, and he basically spent about two and a half years um, drinking and meeting and uh, in a, uh, a bar in Hamburg and it's basically the world of sits like the I don't like to use the word but the drugs aside that those peripheral peripheral people in society went to and it's a it's a re red red light district red light I mean the photos I'm only showing this one photo because I think um, it's probably too much <laughs> this is going out at lunchtime <laughs> um, but the, what I love about it is the honesty, and he obviously spent a lot of time documenting and getting to know the people, and he knew them if you read about what he what he did there. So he produced a series of prints, about 350 prints, hand printed them, and he had a, an exhibition. The only time he did this, so he basically went to the bar, uh, the cafe, stuck up all the photos, and had help. that was his exhibition. This is what I've done. And obviously the book came later, he couldn't get published and it was actually quite delayed, but this uh, exhibition, um, over a space of two and a half days, three days, all the photos, all the photographs disappeared. They were taken by people who recognized somebody, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh. all the photos disappeared. There's one photo left and that was a photo of um, Lars Peterson himself, the rest. He'd given the whole, he'd given it all away, it was his way of, 
Now, I mean, if you could, if you had one of those prints now, it'd be worth a, a fortune. Um, not that that's important. But it's, what I really liked about this is this idea of the giveaway. So, uh, in 2020, uh, 2010, 10 years ago, um, I got uh, commissioned to produce uh, an, an exhibition at the waterfront. So, what we did was um, I'd been out and about documenting, taking portraits and technical through the viewfinder where you photograph through the viewfinder of an old camera with a, uh, a digital camera. There's a light blocking, uh, and I'll show you a photo of that. But basically, we put the photos up, all these here, and there was another. Um, it was about 400 photographs that came from other TTVers around the world. I was part of a group that I've, uh, and I've met this, found out about this technique. Um, I love the idea of uh, using two cameras to take one photo. Um, so all these photographs, they're all six by six. Um, uh, they were Velcroed up. So we had the exhibition up during the festival. And then at the last night we had the TTV takeaway. I'm just going to scroll down to show you the other angle of it. So there's 960 portraits here. That's my son there, I can see him. <laughs> um, and uh, then on the other wall of the steps, this is all changed now because the waterfront have done whatever they've done. Uh, but this is an idea of some of the portraits. I was taking photos of politicians, chance and chances, chances. <laughs> um, anyone who I knew it, the folk artists from street drinkers, real characters. Obviously, the human Ionica now, the, the, um, but I did a project uh, with some of the Romanians uh, way back um, around this time we were doing the portraits. Um, so this gives you an idea. So this here is a digital camera and this is an old analog camera, film camera. So it looks like there's two, um, if you look at these photos, it looks like there's two lenses. So what, what is, this is the light capturing lens for the film that goes around the back of the camera. And this here is a simple little device where basically it's a uh, look down it's one simple mirror so it actually flips it it doesn't correct it like normal mirrors where you are uh, digital um, single lens reflex where you've got the mirror corrects it bounces in and corrects itself so it's actually you're missing a mirror so everything is reversed so i was going around this <clears throat> this is a digital camera this is the analog and this here basically is a we called it a contraption that was a technical term uh, and all that does is keep the digital camera the right distance away from the analog camera uh, and also stop uh, a light cast going across the so you got a, a photograph. So you're essentially photographing the viewfinder and the screen. So these have got these soft rounded edges. Now they, remember, this is two cameras a digital camera with an old camera, but you're still just taking a digital image. So it's in essence that this, this camera works as a filter. So this top lens here, this top. Uh, piece of glass, they're all slightly different. So you could have the same camera, but this glass will be different. Um, so you get this lovely, you can get these lovely edges with them. So this is, I, I, I put this portrait out particularly because this is Geordie that was on the um, Jerry Anderson show here. If you remember, Jerry Anderson and Geordie died there recently in the house fire, sadly. But he, he, um, uh, he used to phone in the Jerry Anderson, I, uh, all the characters, and he, he used to love going around with it and the whole thing about the the technique was that it, people didn't expect a result because I, I would actually be looking down through the viewfinder or side on uh, if i was doing portraits like this i would actually be side on to photograph this way at you it's uh, the mirrors complicate things so left is right and right is left and up is down so i had to train my height <clears throat> uh, and this was a, a really really interesting way of doing that uh, and actually fooling your eye, but training your eye. So knowing to move your body and to move the camera the wrong way, but it's the right way. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> so then this is another one of the portraits I was doing. Again, this representative of what, what I was up to really, just um, capturing the zeitgeist almost. So the, the, I love this photo. This is on the, I think this is on the Mini 12th at Temple War Avenue. I just love the, the, the pierced eyebrow. Then obviously you've got the orange, the sash orange when he was part of the color parade, I think it was. So that, that whole uh, exhibition was, um, that was down to, I mean, I was doing it, the project anyway, I just got down a rabbit hole with it. I was interested in exploring it as a means of portraiture. And if, if you look, look for through the viewfinder, um, there's a Flickr group on, uh, you'll find plenty, plenty of fine examples of that. 
I just, I just <laughs> became obsessed and went down a rabbit hole with it. And I, I'm, I'm very proud of that work. It was a good body of work. So now here, um, I want to talk about a fellow called Kudelka, um, very famous photographer. Um, he would have taken photos of um, the Czech Republic as it, as it was falling. Um, there was famous images of the people climbing on the tanks, uh, uh, which he would actually taken, but no, but he, he couldn't, his identity had to be protected because of the, obviously what was happening there. So it took him a while to actually uh, get out uh, uh, and then pursue um, what he's up to now. I mean, he's, I mean, he's well known, uh, fantastic photographer. You look at what he's doing now, particularly with uh, um, wide angle, um, I think he's using the X pan and probably wider, but it's about the borders. He's looking, uh, I think he's looking particularly at the Palestinian sort of Israeli border. But this body of work here, this photo I think is from Slovakia in about 1965, 67. I think I'll just check my notes. Um, so, what I love about this, I mean, he spent about 10 years going around all the different travelers, uh, gypsies as it were, in uh, the Romania, Hungary, stuff like it, all, all around there. Um, just inspirational work. It's, a good, it's good to, I mean, his, his uh, style of printing wouldn't necessarily be my style, but I'm actually, as I've got older, uh, I would be more appreciative of what he was up to, um, particularly in some of the lighting conditions that he's working with. Um, but this photograph, similarly to the the, some, uh, the migrant mother photograph, there's actually another photo of baby in here. So there's three, four, four children here in this photo. Now, this is very presumptuous, a bit of a jump with this, but this is a visual leap. I started working with the travellers um, in East Belfast, uh, sorry, I've been uh, the Mona Bypass. So this is a photograph. So when I was looking through uh, the Gypsies book, which I got there, um, the similarity, and merely this is a so storytelling is the same, I suppose. There's people's stories are the same. You, there's only there's two children here. I think these are twins as well. Uh, just had the milk. Uh, again, this is about access being allowed in there and being welcomed in and, and having the respect, showing respect, and getting the respect back as well. Because you know, you sort of there's an unwritten uh, rule for me about the, this kind of work. I don't sell to the papers, particularly this um documentary work um, and because of that not just with the travelers but also uh, other situations so I'm, i've been invited back to work in sort of back behind the scenes negotiations around stuff um so again with the access and this is i mean <laughs> this photo i i really like this photograph though i'm not sure how bernie does um i was actually trying to frame him in the doorway uh, and he just kept walking when you're taking a photo. What are you taking a photo for? I spent an awful, I spent about two and a half years, um, maybe more, <clears throat> traveling around, going to blessings of graves, uh, christenings, uh, weddings, um, and just had the best of crack. But also, I was subjected to discrimination as well with them. Uh, you know, I can remember one time we, were, we walked in, I ordered four pints, there was, there was four of us. Uh, we were down south near um, Toon, and um, next prime, go for the next round. Uh, one of the lads goes up, and we're not serving you. But we just, and even if I went up, they, they wouldn't serve it. It was just, no, we're not serving you. You got those pints, you got past this, but you're not. So the discrimination, uh, we got chased out of town, that town, they accused of thieving, we had to drive. I mean, there's another one in base, it's not longer there, a, a pub we went into for a christening, we went back the next day. And, they wouldn't serve us so when you're not allowed there. And even if that me objecting, saying back for they just wouldn't serve us. Um, and I'd like, I want to revisit this stuff. I think the, the, the travelers, um, I've been doing some work recently with, I've done a little bit of work with um, filming. So I'll be thinking about going back and revisiting these photos and uh, producing something, a mix between stills and uh, audio and recording. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But so moving swiftly on. <clears throat> so this is a, a well-known photographer called uh, Henry Carter Brisson. Um, there's a phrase called the decisive moment. Um, uh, now he's not everyone's cup of tea and some people see him as perhaps a little bit too 
uh, rigid in what he does, but I, I, I think you have to study uh, some of the, because he's also a painter and he was also a sketcher. He actually gave up the camera, uh, retired and just went to sketching. So he's always sketching, taking forward, and he's looking for singular moments within a frame. And this 35 uh, millimeter framework, so the, 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 using the lens that most represents what how we see our, our eyes. So he would be full frame, which I would, something I would be uh, an exponent of as well. Uh, the way I learned uh, photography, I'm pretty much an autodidact. One of the jobs I had, I used to work for aerospace, taking photos of um, components in situ. So um, one of the things was to make sure you showed what you need to be shown. So it's get rid of everything that would distract from what the part you're going to show, the, the sump valve or whatever the mounting brackets and how they were attached to it. You had to show that information clearly. So my own work is very much about that uh, composition and content where I'm looking at the edges. Uh, Henry Calabrese on, is a master at that. Uh, this photo here, the guy, this is the uh, King's coronation. I love this because he's, I, I only found this out there today. I was reading up um, yesterday. Um, that he was, uh, Brisson was uh, over by the behest of a communist newspaper. So he wasn't really interested in the pomp and circumstances, more about the people. So most of the people here have been up all night and I just love that. <laughs> uh, and a nice bed of newspapers as well. And there's a different time in here, and that's 1932, I think that was taken. And then this here, <clears throat> this comes in with that communist newspaper sort of thing, but there's a phrase that Brisson uh, came up with, uh, sharpness is a bourgeois concept. Uh, and I love this image. This is in Slovakia, I think it is 1965, yes. So 55 years ago. And I think this is early morning light. I think the fellas, I've, I mean, I'm putting the whole thing to it, but I can see that bike wobbling under the weight that if he's got a hangover, he's got to get home, get that and go to work or maybe I don't know, maybe seen too much in it, but I love the wobble in it. That photo doesn't need to be pristine and sharp to, to get that idea of movement and the wobbliness on the bike, on, on the stones on the foot, under the... So then this next photograph, um, this is a bit of a mischievous photograph, a guy called um, Monsieur Camelli, and he essentially, uh, I think he got the, the priests drunk and went up on the roof of the seminary. Uh, and I think that and a few other um, uh, miss, whatever, uh, what's the word? Um, basically got kicked out of the seminary because of this and a few other things it had done. But I love this uh, beautiful form. It's back to that. I mean, it's not a perfect photo of the printing. Actually, the way he's done it, he's actually well known for that high contrast. Uh, and once he's worked that out and how to develop uh, again, an interesting character is worth looking at his work, Gia Camelli. Um, but I, it's just a photo that I've always liked. Um, so here on World Photo Day, live from the Lynn Hall, well, live now, but not tomorrow. Um, sorry, I'm taking this seriously. Okay, so this next screenshot, this is, I'm gonna, uh, this is an idea I've got for, something I want to try and set up, but it's, um, there's a documentary about this guy uh, called Edward Maybridge, M-U-Y-B-R, the name's there. Now he proved that a horse, horses who's left the, uh, the ground when it was galloping. Um, there's a whole story, backstory about the, um, how he didn't make any money from it because he sold it, uh, the rights by, and there was a stables built, and a, um, Really interesting documentary, if you can dig it out. I think it's on YouTube, uh, Edward Maybridge. Uh, well worth watching. Um, <clears throat> so these, this is uh, Edward C. Curtis and his documentation of the uh, Native American. It's, again, really, really important work. So, you know, often I've, I've been asked, you know, why am I taking photos? And, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't really know why. <laughs> if that makes sense. If I take a photo, I do. I don't go out. Generally speaking, I'm not going out to take a photograph. I'm, I'm, I go out equipped. I'll be looking and seeing. And I'm, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, being prepared to see a photograph and, and being at the ready. So, um, 
this is recording the present to the future, so it can be a very specific thing. Like he went around and Curtis went and documented the Native American crowd, um, Native American tribes, um, or you could be documenting the overlooked part of society, um, which seemingly you know, uh, something that interests me is just um, so recording the present for the future, and we'll come back to that again. Um, <clears throat> If you're talking about contemporary photography, one of the photographers that I really, really like is a guy called Majek Takovic. And I would do a search for Cardiff After Dark. Uh, just the, his work is, he's one of the best around, I think, just capturing those odd moments. Okay, I mean, out and about drink with drinking, it's not the easiest thing to do. People are unpredictable at the best of times when they've got a, a rake of drink in them and, and they see a camera, they can be uh, intimidatory and have a go at you. And I've certainly, over the years, I've had, uh, I've got nothing but admiration for this fellow's work for what he's doing here. Uh, his website, you know, he's, I think he's living over in um, Thailand now, running courses over there. But um, seriously, great photographer. So here's a portrait of Magritte by um, Bill Brandt, who we mentioned him earlier. I'm a fan of Magritte. Uh, Anyway, in the Surrealist, so um, it's, a, it's one of my favourite portraits. Uh, I like this, I like this very, very much. And here, <clears throat> so uh, again, the Surrealist is Dali, and you would have seen this photograph. It's called Atomicus, I always forget the name of it, but uh, the photographer took it, it's a guy called uh, Philip Halsman, so he would have done an awful lot of. Um, photos of uh, for Vogue and society and one of the things he did he would have maybe two or three rolls of shots of film at the end and he would ask the sitters he's brought come doing a wee private project might as well use these films up uh, shots up can I take a photo of you jumping so I recommend you look up the Philip Halsman jump series because there's some really really quirky and unexpected um, sitters in there including Edward and Mrs Simpson um, but uh, so they were great friends and collaborators and they, they I think this this took them all day throwing cats on buckets of water and cleaning up and setting it again and you can see the setup here where you've got people holding the chair and frame very I mean I, I love it's again this is one of my favorite portraits because Dali just <laughs> Dali's a rocket um, so this is another, this is a portrait uh, photo I took, I got um, from a guy called Rob Bremner um, and I just love this. I lived in Manchester. I'm actually from Tundragee. I was born in Lurgan and um, we lived there in Tundragee till I was seven and moved um, 1972. You know, not a good time so my parents decided they didn't want us brought up here. For them. It was like, stuff happened anyway um so Ma we lived in manchester I, I went to boarding school in norwich and went from boarding school to manchester and this reminds me very much of that time uh the quick save uh we were yeah <laughs> i just lo I, I think it's just a, a great great portrait um and there's an awful lot in these if the way the standing that uh, how they're set up there's a portraiture that um, it's environmental, yes, but I mean, I think it's more the idea of there's a knowing conversation going on here. There's a uh, there's an exchange. I like the way the wife isn't is looking away and he's looking at the, the husband's looking straight at it. There's um, <clears throat> if you go back and look through portraiture, um, there's a fellow called August Sander, um, which is August Sander. But, um, worth checking out his body of work that he did and he went around sort of very German, Germanic I suppose the categorization looking at uh, work work craftsmen uh, baker I mean really really interesting body of work not much of it survived but enough of us of it for us to know so this formalized standing like this is that's you know obviously it's from uh, it goes back I think nowadays the portrait you tend to see it, it's a little bit more homogenized where the time take away any sort of uh, emotion. There's more of a, I, I get real emotion from this for I really like it and I've got that, that's, I've got that hanging up at home. So then this is a little, I remember I said to you earlier about um, recording the present for the future. So I've been 
out and about. This is down by Lagerside uh, Courthouse. So this is actually, um, this here is the bunker that got taken away. It was the last bunker that was removed. So the skateboarders are down here. This is the time of hope around Lagerside where we've got a new future and you've got this new space and it's going to be welcoming until they decide to pry it, close it down as, as such. So there was all the kids skateboarding doing all sorts. So and I, I took this photograph after I'd already said to them, they said, what are you taking photos? And I just recorded the present for the future. So you can see this guy with his mouth open. So I took this photograph and this is printed maybe within two days of it. And I actually wrote this down. So your man came out. So uh, the last frame. So what, do you t what are the photos for? Came a voice from behind me and I was taking photos for the future, I replied. So the people know what used to happen. So then at the last frame of the frame, took the photograph there after being, and can I take a photo? Yep. And as the film reminds, wow, we're in the future. And I love that. I'd love to be able to find these lads. I wonder if they're around and out. So that's, um, so then <clears throat> I've been doing a, a lot of documenting the area I live in. Again, most, most times I don't go out with an intention to take a photo. I've got a camera with me, a, a little, um, 35 mil lens, so a um, little Fuji, again, the Arts Council, they basically gave me uh, a grant for a Fuji S, 100S, and then I upgraded to the Fuji T, which I've still got. It's been battered and it's still doing, but <clears throat> doing the do. Um, but I'm out and about, so it's really about looking and seeing to encounter. So I started this series of photos where I wanted to photograph children because I was told that yeah, I couldn't, there's a whole thing, that you shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. And I, particularly in, within the area I lived in, there's a, let's just say the, the reticence about cameras and not understanding what it's about. So I've lived in the area for 10 odd years, I've been documenting and photographing. Uh, and I, I was very willful in this. I, I made a decision, I'm gonna photograph the kids, but in it, not show the faces. So you've got this one here, the way you go, just, I'm just coming back from the shops and she's just lying there outside. <laughs> Too good not to take a photograph. And then these lads practicing. Again, not showing their faces. I suppose if you dug deeper, you could probably find out how they are, but it was more the challenge of it to me, um, to try and get an image. I wouldn't take an awful lot of photographs. I wouldn't be doing this prey and spray where you take a rake of photos and get one. Uh, I've become a lot, lot more um, rigid in that, particularly when I got that, um, the Fuji from the Arts Council, that was all part of it. Uh, here again, I love this, just, you can't see his face. You've got the little orange gun and the red, white and blue lampposts. There's a sym symmetry to it. And then this, uh, <laughs> this was, they were, they were dressed in the street. So there's an old, there's, there's actually a very multi-layered photograph. So this is a, a PVC uh, banner of, uh, you know, a sandbag there, because they were dressed in the street, making a bunker for the beginning of the Battle of the Somme. So this would be 2016. So they dressed the street up, they had some sandbags. Uh, you can just about see the flags there, yeah. So they made this little bunker. I mean, uh, it was really interesting use of pallets and actually using them in a way that perhaps hadn't been done before. They might make the little sheds and I've got a, a friend who documented the sheds, Cliff McGibbon. Uh, he went and documented the sheds, just the structure themselves. Um, and I, I mean, I, of course I dived in and got a few photos inside. I think that's, I prefer, I'm, I'm much more interested in that, that sort of uh, human interaction. I like that exchange. Um, but they've got, of course, the whole thing is trying to do it in a way that it's not obvious that you're just there, you put in the viewer there without intruding. So, um, <clears throat> this kid here, he's wearing a ghillie suit, so his little sniper suit, and all he's doing is jumping off. And it's back to that whole thing, you're looking at it, what, it's the only thing you can see really that tells it is the, uh, is the little orange uh, front of the little gun that he had. Um, the sandbags, I mean, that will, that, I think, this would be a really, really good print, big. So here's a big reveal. This is uh, one of my, this is my favorite photograph. Uh, I've had this photo for a long time. There's an awful lot of people I could have spoken about here in uh, an awful lot of photographs. So um, I think oh, I really wanna, I'm just gonna finish up with this because it's, it's 
to me, it says an awful lot about the unseen, the overlooked. Um, uh, and also, he uh, got a photo. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go on to it now. So this is my favorite photo. This is a guy called uh, Rennie Bury. It's a very famous photograph. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, and it's taken in Sao Paulo. Now, it, it basically asked for access onto the roof. He just thought about taking a, a photograph and he had a, a 135 zoom lens on. So not normally you, because he was in a Magnum agency with Henry Carter Breeson, um, he dictated that you should basically, any photos would be from 35 mil, that as uh, how the eye, human eye sees it. So seemingly uh, when he showed him this contact sheet, um, it got passed and it was allowed in. It was a very rare instance of it. And he didn't even mention it. Carla Breeson didn't even mention it to Rennie Brewery, but he always liked the fact that he got this photo in past. Uh, so he broke the rules. And again, that's part of photography where you're, you're breaking the rules. We've all seen, we can see thousands and thousands of photos, millions of photos of cats at sunsets, um, taking photos that are interesting and, uh, and breaking rules to a certain extent. They don't necessarily have to break rules, but um, often they're a lot more interesting if they have. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think there's a blank. Yeah, so there's a few uh, links here now. So I'm John J. Boucher at Twitter, uh, Instagram, Moochin Photoman, that's M-O-O-C-H-I-N. You can see that here. There's a couple of links here. I think they'll probably be put in on the video afterwards. So there's a really interesting link, uh, British Journal of Photo Journalism, uh, Anders Peterson, uh, The Atlantic, Margaret Burke White. Recommend you look at that. Some of her work is very, very good. Um, this slogger tool is an article I wrote about Roger Fenton uh, uh, for slogger tool. Uh, Fenton would have been the first war photographer, but also there's a whole issue whether he staged photographs um I mean, there's a whole dip that we could do another video about that just with um what fenton did and uh, matthew brady civil war photos of uh, the american civil war but we'll say that for another time uh, and then the last one there is a link to henry carla on when he visited china at the cost between the revolution fascinating some amazing photographs in there so i'm john boucher this has been me and uh that's you then <laughs>